Chicago Bears have <laughs> officially removed Shane Waldron as the offensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears as of this morning. Eberflus spoke yesterday, and obviously he had a lot to say, and he said Shane is our offensive coordinator as of now. This morning, I guess they had uh, more meetings, more conversations. Shane Waldron at as the OC for the Chicago Bears. Let's go back uh, to this offseason when Jackson Smith and Jigba was speaking with a Chicago talk show, uh, and they asked about Shane Waldron, who obviously was the offensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks last year. Jackson Smith and Jigba, obviously, on the Seattle Seahawks. So, right question would be, what are we getting here? Let's take a listen. Bears fans are super interested about the offensive coordinator coming in, Shane Waldron. What can you tell them about who they just hired to, to uh, try to get this offense where it needs to go? Um... Uh, oh. this, is, this is live? Yeah. <laughs> We're not live. We're not I'm live. I'm playing. Um, <laughs> uh, good luck to y'all. I mean, he, he's a, okay. he's a great right. So, I mean, that was literally how it started. And Jackson Smith and Jigba was out. He's, he's young, rookie. Okay, so what does he know? Who knows? But I think what a lot of people in Seattle knew was the offense wasn't, you know, fantastic. So then there was a lot of chatter this morning on uh, the morning shows on ESPN about how nobody really wanted to go in there and be the OC. You mm. know, Eberflus, how how long of a leash does he have as the Chicago Bears head coach? You have a lot of weapons, don't have an offensive line. Well, let's look at some of the stats we got, obviously, about the Chicago Bears offense thus far. Highest sack rate in the NFL. 10.7% of the dropbacks. 28th in explosive play rate, 4.2% of the plays. 23rd in success rate on first down. And then, obviously, they've scored an NFL low 10 points in the first quarter across 22 drives. Now, there's a lot more stats to say that they stink. Sure. I think we all see that. <laughs> Offensive line, not fantastic. Sure. The sacks, is that on the O-line, all of them? Or is it on Caleb? I think he got sacked like nine times last yeah. week, whatever yep. the case is, 35 sacks in total. I mean, it is a lot of times him being tackled. Is it because of him? Is it because of the offense line? Is it because of the plays? Nobody's open. Who knows? But what they did know is that Shane Waldron can't be the guy in control of this offense anymore. Let's go to nine-year NFL vet. Host of everything, DB, good D, bad D. Ladies and gentlemen, Darius J. Butler is here yes, looking sir. very cool. D. Butch, what are your thoughts on the move? I think it's Expected. Yeah, I think it is a good way to describe it. But is this something that's going to turn their season around, or at least the future? I mean, we kind of saw this coming. It's hard to say turning the future around or, or turning, you know, turning things around. Even this season, you still got the same personnel. How much can uh, the new OC Thomas Brown, who was their past game coordinator, he was previously in Carolina with Frank Wright with uh, Bryce Young, and uh, so when you get these young quarterbacks, okay, that makes feel good. <laughs> number one, first and foremost, okay, yeah. <laughs> But, hey, if there's been some good things said from the people in the building. I know that's been around uh, Thomas Brown, big accountability guy, which we obviously know we need that. But for the quarterbacks, man, it always starts with protection, first and foremost. you got to have the protection up front. Some of the things, I don't know what's going on in the building. Some of the things are obviously on Caleb Williams. A lot of people are saying Caleb is, you know, regressing. Uh, he's played 10, 10 games in the National Football League. This is kind of who he is right now as a quarterback. Obviously, we know he's talented, but you got to have protection so that you can actually get some use and production out of those great weapons that they do um, have uh, outside. But uh, off-target throws, spacing, not a bunch of defined throws and reads for Caleb right now, so hopefully they can fix that um, and, and see you know what he can really do with his uh, talent. Yeah, allegedly there was a couple meetings ever had by veteran players that went and spoke to Poles and the Eberflus and asked for Shane Waldron's removal. Say, so listen, we this ain't okay. We ain't doing this. Done with this. this guy. How come whenever they put what our offense looks like on camera, uh, or in like a ours looks so stupid, and then everybody <laughs> else's looks so awesome? That's because Shane Waldron. And then allegedly, there was also some people saying like, "Hey, maybe Tyler." Uh, the bag, man. the bag, yeah. the bad Bajan, the, ba the world's strongest. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. allegedly that was a report out of uh, Waddle and Sylvie, which I believe is a very legit show out of Chicago, right, Zito? Yep. Been around a long time, Sylvie, yeah, right. Waddle and Sylvie, uh, sports radio. Wow. After talking to a few people with knowledge of the situation, players went to Eberflus and Ryan Poles asking them to make a change of offense coordinator. There have also been a few veteran players requesting that uh, Bajan starts. You know, and obviously we watch Hard Knocks. We got a chance to learn about Bajan, his dad, and everything like that. Are they asking for Bajan to start because they think Caleb needs to just watch for a little bit? Like, hey, we think he's been thrusted into a situation where it hasn't gone well. He's getting his ass beat out there, sacked more than anybody else in the NFL. We're already through one offense coordinator. Is there a chance maybe for Caleb? Caleb, just to sit back and watch and see kind of how this whole thing goes, takes a deep breath and moves forward. Are they saying that? Or are they saying, we don't think this guy's got it. We would like Tyler Bajor to come in and find out if he's got it. I, there's multiple different ways you can look at it because obviously there's a bunch of different situations that have happened in the past around the NFL. Let's just look at this year. Uh, Bryce Young 
gets benched for Andy Dalton this year. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gets a different perspective at it for the first time in his life. He's not the guy that's expected to do everything for a program, be a quarterback of the organization. In the meetings, in practice, in the cafeteria, in the locker, everywhere. You know, you're a starting quarterback. It's a different game. He got a chance to sit back, watch it, reevaluate, take a breath. I think he probably got a chance to take a breath. And now he gets back in. They're winning games. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of Panthers are winning game. All of a sudden, it's a vastly different situation. You look at Anthony Richardson with what's going on right now with Joe Flacco. Will he take this as a chance to take a breath and take a perspective change, learn a little bit, kind of realize it's a little different game than whenever he goes back? Is he going to benefit from it? Is that why they're pitching for him not to play, or is it because mm -hmm. they think he stinks? Because there are stats that come out in any rebuttal from Caleb Williams or his camp would be, have you seen who's protecting for him? Yeah. No offense has ever been good without a good offensive ever. line. But there's a lot of stats coming out that maybe, you know, the reason why the offensive line is bad is because sometimes mm -hmm. he doesn't make the right decision. And then when he doesn't make the right decision, plays extended, and he can't do as much as that shit as you did in college, so then you're going to get sacked. There's always going to be counter arguments in this mm -hmm. entire thing. But whenever you talk about off-target throws and everything like this, yeah. what do you think Shane Waldron is saying today? Do you think Shane Waldron is saying, well, I was supposed to have a guy that was supposed to be a magic man. They're calling him Patrick Mahomes. He's not Patrick Mahomes, or do you think he understands that him uh, was just he was just not a great offense coordinator I mean, for any of the situations? Yeah, I mean he's, he's young. Like we, we we always go back. Like it's hard to play in the National Football League. I don't care where you drafted number one, one hundred, one fifty. Like it's tough to come in and play. And uh, Shane did a good job with Geno Smith, but Geno Smith was some over the high pick. I think a second round pick had been around, had been a backup, had seen things, had been a different system, different meeting rooms around different quarterbacks. So when he got to Seattle and had that, another opportunity, he had saw it from so many different perspectives. So for Caleb Williams, as talented as he is, and this big pedestal, high pedestal that a lot of us put him on coming into the league, especially with the setup that they had in Chicago, we just expected more. But it's tough to come in this league and, and play and play well. We've seen flashes. I've seen enough to know, okay, he can play on this level. He has the physical tools, not only the mobility, but the arm strength, the accuracy, all those different things. But you just got to learn. You got to go through some of these patches. Same thing with Anthony Richardson. Same thing with Bryce Young. And then some of these guys will come out and be better on the other side. So, you know, hopefully that's what we see here with Caleb. You hate because we see this story so many times yep. with young quarterbacks. You know, you get to year three, year four, and they've been through four or five different coordinators or different voices. So that's tough to get some continuity there. Uh, but I think the future is still bright for Caleb. For so, sure. Caleb, regardless of what happens, unless old buddy comes in and just kills it and operates the same offense that mm -hmm. Shane Waldron was operating, which you wouldn't because that offense was obviously terrible. So next year he's going to be on his third offense in three years. Yeah. Right? Because Lincoln Riley, USC, then this one, then the next year. Yep. And let's say they don't figure out the offensive line or that offense isn't great. What are you going to have to do? Well, he's number one overall pick, so we're going to have to make then he's going to be in his fourth offense in four years and then all of a sudden yeah. if they do have success next year mm -hmm. let's say they do have success next year while well, that offense coordinator is getting plucked go mm -hmm. somewhere yeah. he's going to be it's like a never-ending supply of you're going to have to adapt and get things right early now i think what one half of the hammer Don. Don, cowboys ap tones face just lit up about is because this is the eighth member of ibra Flus's coaching staff that has either resigned or been fired in the last 14 months. Okay, so normally, whenever you're standing in the middle of a fire, inevitably it's going to catch up. Of course. You know, you can kind of get the couch that's on fire, get it out of the house. Sure. You can get the recliner, out of the house. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can get maybe the, the, the cabinets or whatever, you can get them out. But inevitably that thing is going to, you know, you can do this a lot, and then it's going to at some point, come this way. So I think a lot of people in Chicago are potentially expecting head coaching change at the end of this season. And if they do that, who do they go get? Is it a guy that maybe uh, is no longer the cock of the walk at the university in which he is the head coach and knows Caleb very, very well in Lincoln Riley? Mm -hmm. Or is it a guy who has been an offensive coordinator in college at USC, has been a head coach in the NFL right. before, and is now leading a rookie quarterback to another historic season in Cliff Kingsbury? Is it Ben Johnson? Is it Slowick? There's a lot of opportunity out there. But nonetheless, all of it kind of revolves around Another offense coming in next year for Caleb Williams, third and three. Yeah, years. because of what you said, where you know you, you talked about does the, is the OC successful and then the OC leaves. That's why you know we love Flus, but obviously they're going to make a change. We love Flus. I don't think Chicago. Does. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 they, they, don't don't they, they don't. They, they don't. Like they're so sick of his beard. And because cool. of what you said, it has to be an offensive guy because you can't risk where bringing in a head, defensive head coach and that OC then gets plucked and then Caleb's got another OC in there and it has to be Ben Johnson. You have to back <laughs> up the track for like offer him twenty million dollars a year. 
Who cares if it doesn't work out, whatever, you're going to have to pay a new coach anyways. Go get Ben Johnson and make it happen. Zito just uh, told me, uh, here's another fun fact. Zito's a Chicago Bears fan. He said the only coach that is still around with Ibra Flues from the beginning now is the offensive line coach, and they're great. Yeah. 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 Well, well, and, they, uh, wow. And they're great. That's what Zito, yeah. Zito, Zito just came. It's just another thing to think about. The only coach that's still there is the offensive line coach. Offensive line, obviously, very shitty. Is what Zito, uh, he's a Chicago Bears fan. That's what he just <laughs> mm-hmm. said. Fair enough. Yep, Fair there enough. it is. So I think that's how they're feeling Man. as a whole. You win a game, though, obviously this subsides for another week. But if you lose and it looks bad and people are worried about the future being ruined, too. Because remember, not a lot of quarterbacks have come through Chicago. No, no. No. Okay, not a lot of number one overall picks. I like this. Have come through Chicago. And it's like, we finally get a guy that's supposed to be a guy and then we're going to ruin him again. I don't think so. That's how Bears fans are feeling right now, I think.